I want to I want to sing a few lines from a Finnish song, and then you can tell me how I sound because I also practice Finnish music. So because we have been talking ah, for a while, okay. <laughs> let's change the subject yes, and okay. <laughs> do some entertainment, and nice. then we'll, <laughs> we'll get back to the interview. So this okay. is how it goes. Han aamu kahvin vuoteeseen on tuonut rakkalleen. Valo taittuu ikkunasta onnen hetken jokaisen. Saa peiton alla koko päivän tehdä taikojaan. Ja tuntea kun lumi peittää How was it? It's your language. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I understood every, each word. Okay. Like you were pronouncing it really, cool, really, okay. really good. Okay. Sina, wow. <laughs> sina, sina ummarat joka sana. Is it? You understood? Yes. Yes. <laughs> every, every, That's everyone. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, now let's. Go how back. long did you practice that? I have to ask you. How long uh, the, did the it the music? Take you to... I have been I have been practicing Finnish music for like four years. So wow, okay. <laughs> I can I can yeah. without, with, without looking at the lyrics, I can sing like five or six Finnish songs. And yeah. I wow, really okay. <laughs> I really like Eppu normally. I like the song. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> I think you know them, right? So they are from Tampere. Yeah, I know. They are really okay. big in Finland. <laughs> oh yeah, they are really big. And I also like E Karialain and I think he does Yeah, I love some, him. Yeah, yeah. So he does some different kind of music. It's not very Very, yeah. com- very common. Let's let's now get back to your story. Uh, how do you imagine the plot of a detective story? You know, because I want to know. I have never written a detective story, and that's not my genre. Although I love reading detective yeah. stories, and when I yeah. was young, I would read a lot. So, how do you imagine the plot of a de- detective story? And are there any specific activities that help you create such plots mm. in your in your mind? That's a really interesting question because there's no easy way out, I could say. <laughs> so I started with the with the fact that actually I somehow I got those characters speaking in my head, and I tried to uh, write down each character for a couple of pages. And after that, I started to like put them uh, together and try to make the plot go ahead like really straightforward so that uh, the reader could just enjoy the story and it would change who would talk about the story to the reader. But uh, um, I have heard that some of the writers have Excel Excel files of how, how the plot is de- developing, but I, I somehow I have this just intuition that um. I follow. <laughs> it's not that it's not the best way of creating Uh, a book because you never know how many pages you will have in a month <laughs> because it depends on the mood <laughs> but um this was um originally this book would have been 800 pages but after editing it turned out to be 500 so there was a lot of going on in the story before my publishing editor started her work and um He, uh, she was hoping that I could make the timeline and uh, list all the acts on the timeline so she could follow. And I did that actually only be, um, afterwards, not while I was creating the story. And I think the most important thing is to uh, create the plot that would de- develop so interestingly that the reader would say in, in her, his mm. or her head, Like what's happening next? I I need to know. I need I need to turn the page to be able to find out more. I think that's the most important thing. But how do you create it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe using some cliffhangers. End of each chapter, there should be a cliffhanger. I I feel that, but it it helps to boost the curiosity of the mm. reader. And also, there are a lot of. I think genre writing is uh, sort of easy because you have a lot of basic rules you you need to follow if you want to create something based on these genre rules. One of them is um, red herrings. It's like it's like that that you will have red herrings during the story, and there are some kind of a 
tips for the reader to follow or or maybe you have um, you will have um, this kind of a rule that that I usually follow that the murderer in the that is revealed in the end um, um, can't be a person that is uh, presented to the reader in the end it should be someone who have been uh, showing up during mm. the whole book many times and that's something I, I just love I there's a difficult um, it's difficult for me as a reader to read a book where the murderer is someone I don't even know while I'm reading the book so I, I just love the who done it mm. mm. uh, way of writing so that yeah. you will yeah you will just have those characters and the reader will have a lot of chances to say oh that it might be that Him. one or that one or that one yeah what are the most challenging parts of writing detective stories what do you think as a detective writer i think the ending the end how to end the story so that the reader will find it satisfactory mm -hmm. you know like you will first want to know what's happening what's happening what's happening it's getting more intense it's getting scary but how do you end up with the story so that the reader uh, will have the catharsis mm. or how do you say it yeah yeah, yeah. I, 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 know, so I, I i know i know what think, you mean <laughs> yeah it's really difficult but um, I try my best. <laughs> Do you think uh, like you have to have the mind of a police officer, like a real life police officer or a detective if you want to write such a stories? Do you think that is necessary, that's, mandatory? That's a great, really great question. I don't know, uh, but I, I think you need to be a really, really super curious person to be like curious enough to find out a lot of details uh, from the real life police investigation. And um, I did my studies, I, I interviewed uh, a homicide detective about his work and it was really interesting, but it was also a really difficult moment because uh, writing detective novels is entertainment and he's doing a real life murder investigations that is a really like tough world so i felt bad after <laughs> interviewing a real life detective but he was also like he was reading and watching um uh, tv police tv series even though he was working as police so i felt that okay and there's a place for entertainment as well so <laughs> i felt better <laughs> yeah but so, it's also a really crazy uh, um being that first you need to plan the murder, then mm. you need to uh, somehow investigate it and solve it. And it all, all happens in your head. So <laughs> <laughs> I think <laughs> writers are also a bit crazy <laughs> to of be course. able to do that. <laughs> of course. I mean, if, some, if someone, let's say you are writing uh, or thinking about a murder, and if someone asks you, like, yeah. hey, what are you thinking? And if you say, I'm thinking about murdering someone or how to murder a person, <laughs> it would be very crazy. Yeah. <laughs> they would be just like, but what? I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And when I was actually interviewing the police officer, um, I asked him, okay, we have this case in Suomi Linna Fortress. We need to have a body there. How mm. would a murderer do a perfect murder without getting caught? <laughs> And he was like, well, he, he, would, he or she, the murderer, would just go there and shoot and then come back. And I was like, <laughs> I'm not able to write 500 pages of that. That's too <laughs> straightforward. <laughs> I need to have mystery, yeah. tension, yes. and other stories, yeah. plots, subplots. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, how many languages do you speak? Uh, well, I speak uh, English and then Swedish. Finished, of course, it's my yeah, mother tongue. Uh, mother tongue, yeah, and then a little bit of Spanish and German, but mainly English and Spanish. mainly English. Yeah. Main, yeah, I understand. And yeah, what we have so, yeah, our yeah, language please. is so, mm. so small 
I uh, know language Only... area. So we need to be open to the other languages <laughs> to be able to <laughs> to yeah to travel and meet people. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. It is only spoken by five point five million people living in yeah, Finland. Yeah. So and it's not it's yeah. not an e- easy language, you know. I. Uh, No, I... so that's why I was so impressed by ah, your okay. performance. <laughs> because because I call myself a Finnophile, it means I am oh, very really? yeah. I, I I am obsessed with everything from Finland, and because I lived in Finland for three years, and I met some really nice people, men and women. So I have a very good friend living in Oulu, and I also have my oh, nice. ex boss who is living in Helsinki. He lives in Vuosaari. Do you know Vuosaari? Okay. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I okay. Know. So he lives. <laughs> he, he lives in Vuosaari. So they taught me a lot about okay. Finland, Finnish culture, Finnish music, and you know everything about Finland. And I was I was getting all those information and taking them in my head, and that's how I actually fell in love with Finland. And also, your country is so beautiful. There is no way someone will not fall in love. <laughs> With Finland, I oh. guess, <laughs> and also Finland yeah. is Finland. Um, it has been ranked the happiest country in the world for like five years yes, now. Yes, I know. <laughs> and But do you know what is a bit uh, weird? We are what? really like uh, serious people, mm-hmm. and the Finnish people are like yeah, I walking know. on the streets. We are I really know. like we are not smiling. So I was like, where's the happiness now? <laughs> <laughs> That's that's why Finns are like they think what just happened. I don't know. They are just calling us yeah. the happiest people, but we don't even smile. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know it happens. In one of your interviews with the Swedish media, you said Finnish detective stories have not achieved as much success abroad as their Nordic neighbors because Finnish crime writers have not been as good as their neighbors when it comes to promoting themselves. So. You also said this is now changing. So, can you discuss this a little bit? Well, yeah, I think um, uh, as Swedish um, as Sweden is our neighbor country, I feel that Sw- Swedish especially are really good with uh, branding and selling, and mm. you know they have IKEA, they have mm. a lot of brands that go mm. global, mm. and it's it's something they. It's in the mindset. I think they are brave enough to boost good mm. things. But Finns are, Finns, are really are, Finns, Finns are a bit shy, maybe. Uyo. <laughs> yes, I think so. Even though we have great things, we are a little bit shy, and we are mm. not we are not feeling comfortable of boosting ourselves. So <laughs> maybe that's about it. I feel that we have a lot of good writers, and I feel actually that after Finland was picked as a happiest. Mm. happiest place so i feel that it, finland is actually a really interesting country and it, it could be our time now and mm. we also have a like dark mindset somehow so it it, <laughs> it fits yeah, really good mm. with the detective novel <laughs> plot mm. Mm. like melancholic melancholy and sadness yes melancholy <laughs> yeah Melancholy yeah. and sadness. Yeah, I understand. But so, also we have like, mm-hmm. yeah, beautiful nature. Of course, and of course. Really beautiful places. So it's yeah. a good combination. Yeah, the forest and the lakes. I still miss those. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> they're very beautiful. Actually, they're very beautiful. So, who are your favorite detective writers? Name one or two, or more if you want. Well, yes, uh, I think after reading you, Nesbo. He's mm. a Norwegian guy. Norwegian, he's okay. just like the best, I think. Mm. And mm. he he's writing stories that I just love. They are a bit violent, mm. but they are also really good. And the plot is really good. So I I think he's the best. And but I also love Camilla Krebe, and she's uh, from Sweden. Sweden. And okay. those two are my my favorite. Like, Big, yeah. biggest favorites at the moment, I think. Uh, in one of your interviews, you said you want to be a detective queen one day. Is this your biggest? <laughs> yeah. Is this your biggest dream as a writer? Uh, it is my biggest dream, but I don't actually know what that means. When, when can you say that I'm a I'm a detective queen? Detective queen. I don't know. <laughs> so I actually feel that at the moment I'm really grateful because. I, 
I have lots of readers around the world and I get so many nice messages from the readers. I have like Instagram is the best way of seeing things mm. because without Insta- Instagram, I couldn't see, for example, in Poland, I have a lot of readers posting such cool uh, book uh, blog mm. posts about, mm. uh, about my book. So without Instagram, I wouldn't see those. So I feel that I'm actually really grateful and happy at the moment. So I couldn't ask more. <laughs> yeah, <That's> I, my... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I understand. But of course, but yeah, but I could, I just, I would love to, uh, if I, I'd be able to continue many years mm-hmm. and write more and more stories. So that maybe that's my dream. Yeah, for I, now. Under- I understand. So now this is the question mm-hmm. I want to ask you. If this dream yeah. doesn't come true somehow, of course, I don't want mm. this dream. I, I, I really wish that <laughs> your dream comes true. But if it, do, yes. if, it, if it doesn't, I want to know how you will feel. What do you think? That's a good question. It's not easy to lose in a game, you could mm. say. <laughs> mm. But I feel that I, I got so many things uh, already. Mm considering my books so i'm i'm just so grateful that i wouldn't feel that i would be disappointed mm. i think i would just figure out something else i could do because i'm really curious so there are a lot of things i would love to do so maybe i would do something else but um <laughs> yeah i think so but i'm also all i'm also like um when i was um publishing the first book and when it came out i decided that if even one person in this world will read this book and send me a message and say that he or she loved it that's about it i'm happy and when it happened it's actually a good story i need to share it because i got my first uh, reader comments from a, a lady who was emailing me and she told that she and her 90 year old mother mm. love detective novels and they think that murder in a week makes you happier or makes you makes you <laughs> makes life better mm. Mm. <laughs> and they both love the book so i felt that there were al- already two readers reading the book and they loved it so i'm happy <laughs> <laughs> what is yeah. the what is the most finished thing ever to you as a fin what do you think i think sauna and ice ice swimming Mm. Mm. I fell in love with the cold water swimming uh, mm. last winter and I now I need to do it even though without sauna mm. uh, but uh, Finnish people just love to go to sauna and then have a dip in ice cold mm. water so I think those two the combination of hot and cold is something <laughs> really Finnish <laughs> yeah so what are the words if I can remember correctly one is kulma another is kuma is it yes So thanks yes, th- it thanks it's so nice talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you and thanks for your time.